Hello everyone. Hi, mom and dad. My name is Nathaniel Sibiko. You guys can call me Nell. And this is my project. Revitalizing Osmosis and Architecture. And um, the project is called Kaizuka Sub Subway Station. And so first off, I'd like to thank my committee, Marcel, my chair, um, Ko, Aitani, and Galen Newman, I don't think he's here, and also my studio professor, Brian Gibbs. Um, without them or their support, I don't think that I would have gotten this far in this project. And so to start off, um, this project stemmed from my interests in the impact of architecture on the urban scale. So trying to come up or think of a project that could help me explore that um, I decided to do a subway station, which with transportation, a subway station is essentially a gateway to a city or an exit to a city. So I thought that would be a really interesting thing to study. And so for my project approach, um, I decided to look into the definition of osmosis. This is taking the very basic concept of osmosis. Um, so in a solution, there's a concentrated side and a non-concentrated side of molecules, and those molecules are able to flow freely through a semi-permeable membrane within that. And so molecules in general can move horizontally and vertically, and they don't need any assistance to move through um, that semi-permeable membrane. And when this is translated into architecture, we can consider that semi-permeable membrane as architecture. Um, architecture is what influences and helps people move through spaces to different places and also assists people to move vertically. And so this project is located in Fukuoka, Japan. It's one of the largest cities in Japan. Um, and this is a map showing the different subway, I mean, uh, railroad entities within um, the city. And so the rail, the uh, Japan Rail is indicated by the red, and that's a nationwide entity. And then we have the Fukuoka subway, which you can see starts to bring, or to connect those missing links between the Japan Rail and then the Nishi Nippon Railroad, which is a different uh, private industry or entity. Um, also, another thing to note about Fukuoka City is that their goal for the future is to become an international city, which means that they want to grow economically and um, they're very interested in new construction and the built environment. Um, so zooming into, oh, let me go back one. So um, the project is located in Hakozaki District, um, indicated by that little pointer there. Um, and what's interesting about that is you can see the different entities coming together in that one spot, but they never intersect. So that makes it a really prime location for this to become a regional center before reaching um, the city center itself in Fukuoka. So zooming into Hakozaki District, um, the main, um, I guess, attraction there is Kyushu University. And so this dash line indicates where that campus is and a future development, um, redevelopment within Hakozaki. So Kyushu University is relocating their entire campus to a different location, which is Something really rare in Japan, um, this gives a lot of opportunity to redevelop a very, very large area. And so this summer I participated in a um, urban design camp and we were able to study this a little bit more in detail. And this is a zoning diagram of the concepts that the Fukuoka City and Kyushu University have been working on on how to redevelop this um, area. And so the, red, or the pink dashed line is where um, I focused my mini master plan in, and the blue indicates where Kaizuka Station is. And the important thing to note with this diagram is that they're wanting to elevate pedestrian um, access onto a skyline or a, a pedestrian walkway that's elevated away from vehicular traffic. And so zooming into that railroad map, um, Kaizuka Station is a really interesting stop. It's the be beginning and end of two different entities. And then you can see how the JR Railroad never intersects within that. And so this is one of the closest points that they get to. And so I thought it would be um, one of the best locations for this idea of beginning growth and having a regional center um, and that idea of the opening of a gateway to the city. 
And so zooming into that master plan. Um, so since the subway station or the subway railway connects to a normal train system, it actually starts ascending to ground level. And so it starts to um, become this barrier between the west and the east side. And so all of the commercial activity is um, located on the west and then you see residential on the east. And so the people living on the east side have difficulty moving um, across the station or finding how to cross the railroad tracks or um, having to go under it in order to get to the other side. And we can see that in these uh, site photos. So there isn't really a good way to drive up to the station. You have to kind of go under it to get to the other side. And if you're walking, you have to continue down that road where cars pass under. And then um, you also have the option of one um, stair that continues over the station. And so this project has two parts, um, the development of a master plan and then the building itself, which is the station. And so with the master plan, um, what, we, what I did was I continued the existing, existing urban grid through the site to keep it connected. And then to maximize the advantages and um, the size of the site, I created destination nodes within that. And then I pushed down the subway and then lifted the pedestrian skywalk above one level and then also connected it to um, a potential JR station, which would be on uh, the east side. And then the end here would actually continue down through that entire um, master plan of the redevelopment. And so um, to make it more transparent and visually accessible to people on both sides of so the east and the west, um, there's a slope connection through uh, that elevated skywalk. And then um, punctures within that skywalk plaza to connect people to the lower levels. There are two levels of parking underground. And then to be able to bring in light and provide vertical circulation to the people on the um, skywalk plaza and below. And then lastly, um, embracing the skywalk with surrounding buildings that um, make it more of a commercial promenade throughout the whole master plan. And so this is a view of the ground level. And um, what I wanted to show here was how the roads do eventually connect to the other side, or to both sides. But um, the connection from the two different parks on the east and west are, are not interrupted by any vehicular traffic. And so people are able to flow thoroughly in in that middle space and from the um, concourse of the subway. And this is a program of those buildings surrounding it. So the skywalk is supposed to be sort of this urban park landscape um, that is the in-between space between these commercial programs and then residential on the east side. And then this is the Florida area ratio diagram um, showing the different heights and volumes around the skywalk and the distribution of different um, zonings of commercial all on the public level, and then anything above that is more private. And this is the site plan with the um, subway station being right here. Um, so this isn't just a huge slab of nothing. There are different programs within the plaza itself, um, things like children's playground, um, temporary food stall locations, a physical activity zone, art, art exhibition zones, and things like that. So a lot of opportunity for the community to gather in this uh, plaza. And so moving to the actual building, the subway station, um, I continued with the city grid, maintaining that idea, the same ideas with the, land, or the master plan. And then uh, maintain those vertical connections, and these also provide light vertical circulation and will also eventually become wayfinding devices within the subway itself. And so these are then tilted to provide more northern sunlight. And then the commercial program is stacked on top where the skywalk plaza begins. And so that's cut where that sloping action happens so that there's that continuous flow between the east and west sides. And then this is what the final massing generally looks like. 
and this shows the distribution of the program. So like I said earlier, the, um, there's mainly um, parking on the lower levels, and then on top of that is that green space, that park-like space, and then um, the retails uh, directly above that. And so these um, vertical light wells not only provide all of the functions that I listed earlier, um, they also provide the idea of connection to nature. Um, from what I've studied in class or what I've been um, taught is that in Japanese culture, there are times when the connection to nature is more inward focused because they don't have that density within the city and you don't really have that much opportunity for anything outside. And so these are the inward focused connections to nature within the building and the subway. And then um, bringing back that idea of osmosis, trying to provide as many accessible points um, through the subway from uh, the lowest levels to the highest points of the retail and being able to connect people where they want to go. And so this is the lowest level of um, the subway where rainwater collection happens and then parking um, above that. And then this is the subway platform where you see it's very lin linear in nature. Um, where you see the green patches, that's where the um, access to the subway begins. And then um, to introduce a different geometry, I chose to use cylindrical masses. And that is an attempt to help people identify different functions away from the subway functions. And so when people see a different shape, they assume, well, maybe this is something different. And so this is what the interior of that subway platform looks like. And this is the concourse, so this is on the ground level. Um, and there's an introduction of uh, retail and cafe space. And then, um, so when you come up through the, those green patches, um, you come to different ticket gates here. And then you have an option of um, ascending to the skywalk from the outdoors, or you can go directly in, um, into an interior space and go up these uh, spiral stairs here. And so this is a view of the concourse to the subway. So this is the subway here, and then um, the concourse level, and then all of this is retail space. And so this is the Skywalk Plaza, which is one level above the concourse. And so um, we can see that these cylindrical spaces are continued up through the whole building. Um, instead of becoming different programs of function, they become the new circulation because there's an issue between having the subway be something that's secure versus something un, uh, not as secure and more public um, above that. And so um, these areas where people start ascending from the platform become sources of light for the retail space. And so here's one of the um, views of the retail spaces. And when I was talking about how these become um, organizers for wayfinding. Since there are three, you can identify where you are in the building according to where those are. And so level three um, is another level of retail and a lot of area for um, lounging, people waiting, it's a subway station. Maybe they don't wanna wait in the underground, in the platform, and they can wait and have a drink or something. Um, and that continues to the roof where there's a roof garden if people want to be outside but not necessarily in a pedestri pedestrian traffic zone and um, areas for gardens and restaurant spaces over here and so this is a distribution of the commercial activity and the subway activity so um, you can see where these two different lines um, end up meeting in between and then everything above that is commercial activity. And then making sure that the subway platform is secure and then everything above that is accessible to the public. And so this is a section right in um, the middle of the building. And then here are the moments of that connection to nature and the light coming through. 
And so this is the subway, and then this is the first level. And then you can also see how this continues to become um, access to above, and then they also act as um, spaces of gathering, so I call them social stairs, where you can gather um, in the middle. And so this is the structural grid of the master plan. And um, I'm showing this because it eventually also becomes the structure of the building itself. And so I used a custom precast concrete um, module. And this was because I tried to keep in mind that idea of economic growth. Um, they're making this into something bigger. It will become bigger. And so it needs to be something that can be adaptable um, and easily replaceable. And so this is just a detail of what those connections look like. And then an exploded version of um, those different um, precast modules and then the um, tube structure and spider fitting. <coughs> and then this diagram shows how um, those different geometries kind of change to provide different functions. and. Um, also provide that sense of security for both functions or programs in the building. And this is a view from the JR station. And so if the JR station is over here, it's directly connected through this plaza and it connects to the subway station through that Skywalk Plaza. And that's it. Thank you very much. That's a Go lie. ahead. Okay, so on that note, um, we wanted to give the award for excellence to Nell for her efforts. Congratulations.